This is Duke University. Do you consider that Cuba and the United States can have normal relations? The real question is why not? Oh, because Cuba is a communist country. Oh, but you have relations with communist countries. You have a wonderful trade relation with China. You have a wonderful trade relation with Vietnam. So I believe communism is not the problem with Cuba. Oh, because Cuba only have one political party. Oh, but the United States have great relations with countries that don't allow political parties. So human rights, I really believe not. It's not the reason for not having normal relation between Cuba and the United States. And why the Cuban revolution? Why the Cuban made the revolution in 1959? And I start with this. I believe that there is no country in the world, including any and all the countries under colonial domination, where economic colonization, humiliation, and exploitation were worse than in Cuba, in part owing to my country's policy during the Batista regime. I approved the proclamation with Fidel Castro made in the Sierra Maestra when he justified call for justice and especially yearn to right Cuba of corruption. I will even go further to some extent it is as though Batista was the incarnation of a number of sins on the part of the United States. Now we should have to pay for those sins. In the matter of the Batista regime, I am in agreement with the first Cuban revolutionary. That is perfectly clear. You know who say that? You have any idea who say that? Let me help you. President Kennedy, the same person that uh, approved Bay of Peak, the same person, person that deals with the Cuban Missile Crisis. But United Nations General Assembly, you have 193 members, 191 uh, vote a couple of weeks ago asking to the United States to lift the embargo. So 191 <coughs> countries against the U.S. embargo, the majority of the American people against the U.S. embargo, the majority of the Cuban America against the embargo, why the embargo is still in place. I went to Boston, I did the same question, somebody told me, it's a, it's a good question. And I say, I know, I need a good answer. This is another number, Human Development Index, QA is, 19, is 68 <coughs> out of 188 countries, and is considered a high human development country, according to United Nations. I don't know if you saw a couple a slides before, 10% of our labor force, in more than 10% of our labor force is right now in the private sector. That is a huge change in Cuba. These are our mayor partners. You can see Venezuela, number one, but we have relation with Canada. We have relation with Spain. We are doing business with everybody. And you know why the allies from the United States vote against the embargo? It's not because solidarity with Cuba. It's because the embargo is hurting those countries. So. Again, uh, and, and if somebody told to me, say to me that the embargo is because human rights, I can say here that the embargo is the main violation of the human rights of the whole Cuban people, children, women, men, young people, elders. So don't tell me that to improve the human rights in Cuba, you are trying to uh, chuck a, a, a whole country. That not make sense. And, and remember, when you talk about Cuba, Remember our GDP, because it's not fair to compare Cuba with the G7. You have to compare Cuba with the countries that have the same uh, GDP, and you're going to see that we are proud of many, of many. And this is what I'm talking about. All the polls before and after show that the majority of the American wants better relation with Cuba. These are states that passed resolution in support of relations between Cuba and United States. You can see Alabama, Alabama. The Senate in Alabama passed a resolution. Why? They okay because they say that we have a, a, a trade relation of 32 million between Cuba and the United States. And I always say it's 32 million with the embargo. Imagine without the embargo. This poll is from Gallup, and you can see that for the first time in 2016, the majority of the American has a good opinion about Cuba. This is something that summarizes the idea that I want to present today. In Cuba, we believe, and this is my ambassador, last year. In Cuba, we believe that bilateral relations with the United States will be no more only when we exercise full sovereignty on all our territory, when we are no longer under the sanction regime, and when no specific program and following to alter our way of life. The anti-Cuba lobby, those in the United States who um, um, historically and still uh, um, <clears throat> criticize the Cuban government and the situation on the ground in Cuba, uh, um, will often, for 
a variety of reasons focus on several key points. One is um, human rights. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, and the fact of the matter is that um, uh, Cubans who disagree with the uh, current economic, political and economic system in Cuba cannot, in fact, uh, um, uh, pursue um, electorally um, a change in the system. Um, you're not, you point out that only about 10% of the workforce um, uh, is in the private sector. The, these are significant, um, uh, there are significant issues there for many here as, as well as elsewhere. Well, that even Fidel Castro suggested that substantial changes needed to be made in the, the socio-political model. Are changes coming? So the idea is, again, uh, there is a lot of material that you, you can read about, about Fidel, about the idea. I think that Cuba has been changing a lot. Uh, and that is something that I want to, to present uh, when I talk about the labor force. In the last 10 years, that comes from almost zero to 10%. But this is not because we want relations with the United States or because we want uh, uh, something specific. It's because that is a debate inside of the Cuban society and the majority of the Cuban society support those kind of changes. If you talk to, to somebody in Cuba and you say, okay, uh, you want more space for the private sector? Again, the majority say yes. But if you say, okay, we need to privatize education, we need to privatize health care, you are not going to have the same support. The if a group of Cubans wish to form a new political party mm -hmm. legally, mm -hmm. and particularly to take as the premise of the party that the political um, institution should change or that the, the, the nature of private property uh, the extent to which private in enterprise is permitted. If they wish to argue that and to go to elections to present candidates, can they do that legally in, legally in Cuba? Can they do that? To present candidates, you don't need to be a member of any party. But may they present candid you know, candidates as a member of, say, a new party that argues for against, the private sector? Against the system is different in the idea that you no represent any party, not even the Communist Party. You are elected. Again, when I was there, I was not a member of any party because I wasn't a student in, in the law faculty. Uh, in, and my, my, my uh, uh, fellow students decide that I, would, I should be a good representative. So for that reason, they put me in the ballot. I can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> my mom, too. My yeah. mom, too, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so the idea was that they put me in the ballot. But I, again, I have to go to the election. I have to win 51% of the vote, at least 51% of the vote. So the system is different because we don't believe in the idea of the multi-party is a democracy. How large is the first? How large is the, the diplomatic post or the diplomatic uh, uh, body in the U.S. Uh, and how affected is right now the work in the Cuban embassy and its consulates in the U.S. after uh, losing 15 uh, members? And what is the position of the embassy and the Cuban government with respect to this the latest? Uh, Series of, of stories of uh, whatever uh, the health issues with the uh, American. I was waiting that that question. So uh, we lost not only 15 because they they expelled two more in May. So we lost 17. We lost 60 percent, 60 percent of our personnel here. Uh, and let me say this because it's a very complicated issue. It's not easy to 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 respond this in a few minutes. We don't say that nothing happened. We don't say that. Probably something happened. But we can say that this is not an attack because you cannot show a weapon and you cannot show, uh, you cannot show evidence that what happened. You know, this, was, this is the Cuban position about this. But look at this. This is the scientific community here. What really struck U.S. diplomatic in Havana, a sonic attack, was unlike it, scientists say. This is the New York Times. This is the hill. The hill. Reckless hostility toward Cuba damaged American interests. And this is the nation. Slashing Cuban embassy personnel and impeding travel sabotage the normalization process. That is the idea behind this. We don't say that nothing happened, but we offer cooperation since the beginning. We offer to work together. I'm, I'm quite sure that the, uh, I'm correct in saying that the FBI has not offered an opinion yet um, uh, in any definitive um, uh, discussion of, of what happened. Um, the decisions taken by the department argue that the department considers the government of Cuba responsible for the incident and does consider it an attack. 
I understand that this is um, um, a, a significant difference between Cuba and the United States, and one only hopes it will be clarified sometime in the very proximate future.